This morning, uh, I make no apologies for continuing in this line that I'm on regarding what we say. Uh, last week, we were talking about our purpose. We've been talking about our destiny. We've been talking about so many things there that God has for us. But a lot of times, we get cut off at the pass. A lot of times, we find out what God wants for us, but we don't get there. We don't sort of enjoy the labor. We don't enjoy the fruit of it. And so today, I make no excuses or apologies whatsoever because I want to speak today about faith's confession. I want to speak about what will get us over the line, what will push us through the walls that will cause the chains that God wants to release us from to fall from our bodies. I'm, if I can say this word, don't uh, get mad at me, but I'm tired of watching people destroy their lives and the lives of others by their words. Amen? I am tired of listening and watching people destroy their lives and the lives of others by their words. How many people know that words can kill or bring life? Words are very, very powerful. Words can bring life or death. Words are powerful. They are not cheap. A lot of the words that people say are costing them everything. Costing them their, their victory. Costing them everything that they have. I believe that we've got to change the way we talk. You can lose your victory. You can lose your health. You can lose your prosperity. You can lose, you can, you can put whatever you want in there, but by words you can lose these things. Our confessions rule us. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. Words are our great defense. Words are the destroyer of dreams. God gives us dreams. Because he wants us to partake of those dreams. They are God-given dreams. A man once said, I have a dream. And he dreamt about racists. And he dreamt and he started to do something. But you see, it wasn't enough for him just to have a dream. One day he had to stand against all the opposition and against every negative force, and he had to speak the word that he had, the dream, for it to come to pass. I have a dream that one day, and he spoke those words out, and it came to pass. Amen? Your words, whether it's negative or failure, will come to pass. If he would have stood that day and said, I have a dream that white people will destroy the black race or something like that and we'll never ever unite, I want to tell you that's what would have happened. But he didn't say that because God gave him a dream. And what we've got to do is we've got to allow those dreams that God puts on the inside of us to come out of us and we speak it. And as you speak it, something in the realm of the spirit called the supernatural power of God gets involved with your words. Friend, I, I do not have words to even explain or express or even try to understand what God does with the words of faith that come out of your mouth. They could be like a sword. They could be like a, a, like a, like a, like a, a raging storm in the realm of the Spirit bigger than I could even imagine or think. So powerful are faith-filled words. When you speak it, I want to tell you, God gets involved. Words are very, very important. They're our greatest defense. I want to tell you, you can turn the enemy's plan for your life. You can turn it around. And you can find success and the joy of God, amen, and the fulfillment of dreams. 
Proverbs 6 verse 2 says, You are snared by the words of your own mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Most people who are defeated in life are defeated because they believe and confess wrong things. Many confess how they feel and not what God says about them. You can say, but Neil, I don't feel well. I am sorry. The Bible says, let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say they are rich. Let the sick say I am healed. <laughs> I'll just add a few things, amen. And so I believe that we've got to, I'm not trying to say that you're just going to pretend. No, I, I believe that we should sing that song, I'm a great pretender in church. <laughs> but I do believe that somehow or other we've got to get something on the inside of us as we read the Word, as we allow the Word to penetrate on the inside of us, that we believe that He gave everything for me. And every chain, every sickness, every disease, every opposition, every work of the enemy falls from my life because I'm His. David was talking about the, the lambs. Man, I want to tell you, I bet you the, the, the cattle and the sheep, when Jesus died on the cross, they rejoiced. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they would have been saying, I've been set free. <laughs> Can you imagine the ones in the paddock and the ones that were being uh, inspected on that day? <laughs> what an amazing thing. But Je see, Jesus didn't pay that price so we could go and walk around life defeated. He didn't pay the price on a whipping pole so we would remain sick. He wants us to be healed in Jesus' name. He wants us to be healed. So somehow or other, we've got to change our minds. We've got to have our minds renewed and understand. We've got to start to confess and we've got to say, Devil, you are a liar and a thief and a cheat. My God has come to give me life and to give it to me more abundantly. And by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am healed. Hallelujah. I am delivered. I don't need the flu shot. I've got the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. I tell you what, more people get sick from the flu shot than... Anyhow, they're shoving poison in you. Glory to God. <laughs> they're defeated because of, they say what they, what, they, what they feel instead of what God says about them. I believe things have got to change, amen. You're snared by your words of your mouth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs 18 verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. We know about the truth, but really the key words there is you shall know the word know and, and, and the other word is that you'll be free. You will know and you will be free. You will know and you will be made free. See, it's what you know that will change who you are. It's what you really know. I know. Do you know today that you are a child of God? That you are a joint heir with Jesus? Do you know that you are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and dominion and sickness and disease? You're seated in heavenly places today. Well, if we start to stir that up inside of us, when the enemy comes to attack us or whatever's going on, friend, you can reverse what the enemy's plan is for your life. We've seen it so many times. We've seen so many people where, where with, with something where the doctor said there's no hope for you, today they are totally free in Jesus' name. Amen? Because that's what it is. The key words there is know and make. Ephesians 1 verse 3 says, Bless, bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place in Christ. I don't know about you, but that, that, that switches me on. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We are blessed. Turn to somebody and say, I am blessed. I am blessed. 
I, I am blessed, hallelujah. God loves me, hallelujah. The healer has touched my life. He has delivered me. I've made it a practice in my life that when people say, how are you? I say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Some people look at me and they think I'm a bit crazy. But you know, most people when they say, how are you? They really don't want to know, how are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? So why not give them something that will think and make them think? <laughs> I am fearfully and wonderfully made, thank you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. How many people believe that healing and deliverance and financial prosperity is in that? Amen? Come on, is that in there? Or, or, or did, he just, did he leave some out? He said every. Everybody say every. Every spiritual blessing. Healing, deliverance, everything. What an amazing God we serve. What an, what an awesome God. He is an amazing God. And, and I believe that, that this is where we're at. Why not confess Christ and his victory over sin, sickness, and death? I serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. My God, above him there's no other. Jesus Christ is the only way. He has delivered me. He has set me free. He has paid the price for my salvation. He has healed me. He has... He has he, Man, he's given everything. He will never see his children begging for bread. Hallelujah. Even in a wilderness, as David was sharing today, a manna came from heaven. They were in the desert. They wanted a drink and water came out of a rock. Man, he is the supplier of all of our need according to his riches and glory. I want to tell you, God is not broke. He is, is abundant. When we speak of confession, our faith confession, most people think about confession of sin. Or, yes, the Bible does say that. It says if we you know, confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. That's one part of it, but there's another side to confession. There's a positive side. And the Word of God has much more to say about the positive side than the other side. The Bible says this. It says, you shall have whatever you say. Confession is a spiritual law. You can't get away from it. See, what comes out of your mouth. It's what comes out of your mouth. See, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you don't believe that God loves you and that he paid the price for your sin and sickness, you'll just speak the negative. And you have what you say. Or if you believe that Jesus paid the price, then you start to confess what Jesus has done and you get what God said you'll get. Has anybody here ever been healed? Oh, it looks like it works. Come on, give, give me a big, come on, let's give the devil a bit of curry, amen? Poke it in his eye while you're doing it, amen? Come on, how many, anybody here ever been healed? Come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Look at that, it works. Turn to somebody and say, it looks like it works. <laughs> it work, really work, works. This thing works. This, this is, there's this positive side. You shall have whatever you say. Confession is a spiritual law and it works both ways. So guard your words. Romans 8, uh, 30. Uh, one, I want to just read some scriptures here if I can. Of course I can. I'm the, I'm the pastor. <laughs> Romans 8, 30. Now look, look, listen to this. What, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? So sometimes we get in scriptures, if God be for us, who can be against us? And so, you know, that's, that's what, you know, even a song, you know, it's, it, and this great song, if God be for us, who can be against us? But you see, what will you say to these things? See, it's what you say to the things that get around our lives. If you say, 
there's no hope or that's the end or it's finished or goodness knows what else. Well, that's what you'll get. But if you say, if God be for us, who can be against us? And start to believe that with everything inside you. In verse 37 it says, And yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principality nor power nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then he goes on and says, I tell you the truth. I'm not telling you a fib. Friend, I want to tell you, he covered everything there. He covered everything that could ever be covered. Friend, I want to tell you, there's nothing that can separate you. If you can have a faith confession, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no devil, there's no, nothing that can stand in your way. It must bow to the name of Jesus. Because God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you've got arthritis or if you've got some other thing, that arthritis has to confess, Jesus Christ, you are Lord, and he has to depart from your body. I like that. And you see, cancer's... And they say, the cancer's Jesus Christ is Lord. I have no right here. I'm leaving. <laughs> Show him the exit door. Amen? The exit door. I am persuaded. Most people think of sin, but I want to tell you there's more for us than beginners. What shall we say to these things? We're told that Jesus had a good confession before Pilate. It wasn't his admission of guilt. It was his affirmation of the truth. He had a great confession. Pilate asked him, who are you? And he says, who they say I am. He, he had a great confession he wasn't going to bow to, to, to their demands. He wasn't going to bow to what they want. Friend, you do not have to bow to the demands of circumstances and sicknesses and disease and poverty that says you can't do this. Friend, if you're an evangelist, you've got an evangelistic gift on your life and you need to travel to this, this, this country or that country, but poverty's got around your life and you are rooted and grounded at home and you cannot fulfill the purpose and the dream that God has for your life, friend, I want to tell you, you've got to start to stand up and you've got to start to speak to that demon that's holding you bound and you've got to make it confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and finance will come your way because I want to tell you, nothing is too difficult for our God. God can bring money from anywhere. You know what? God doesn't care much about money. <laughs> He's got heaps of this stuff. Hallelujah. <laughs> he had a great confession. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, it says, to hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. What are you hoping for or what are you believing for? Hold fast. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to it. Don't let anything steal it from you. What are you believing God for? Are you believing God for your children? Are you believing God for your husband? Are you believing God for your wife? What are you believing God for? Are you believing God for finance? What are you believing God for? You see, I want to tell you this today. If you see your finance as an impossible situation and you start to speak, I'm a pauper, I can't, I'm limited by this, I want to tell you, you are limited by that. And you are holding yourself back by your own words. If your husband is an alcoholic or something like that, and you go around talking about your husband as an alcoholic, you are holding him bound by your words. I want to tell you, you want to start speaking, my husband is a child of God, hallelujah, and I see him in the house of God lifting his hands and worship him. I'm not watching him. I'm not looking at when he comes home drunk. I see him as a different man. I'm not going to confess what he is. I'm going to, forget, I'm going to confess what Jesus said about him and as David spoke this morning because I'm saved a lamb for a house hallelujah and I claim my whole household I claim the blood of Jesus over my whole household Friend, I want to tell you we as Christians need to talk different is that okay to talk like that 
I'm a no hope man, I think I'll get rid of him. They get another one, man, it's just as bad. <laughs> you won't change until you confess your, your until you change your confession. Confession of faith. You might as well fix up the one you got. Hallelujah. Nancy's had 56 years trying to fix me up. Did not work yet, but anyhow. She's still hammering away at it. <laughs> I think there's a couple of cracks. <laughs> I don't know whether they're wrinkles or cracks. <laughs> Friend, I want to say, you've got to start speaking different over your children, over your finances, over your husband, over your wife, over your situation, over your job, whatever it might be. Oh, nobody likes me in this job. Guess what? Nobody will like you in this job. <laughs> You've got to come here. I'm the most popular person. Hallelujah. I, everybody loves me. Amen. You think that's stupid? No, faith calls those things. No, God calls those things that be not as though they were. Let the weak say they're strong. In other words, you've got to speak different to the circumstances around your life. Is that okay? I'm having fun up here. Are you having fun? The, the Bible tells that, that uh, confession is a vital part of our faith. I, I want you to turn to Romans 10. This is a very interesting scripture here. But what does it say? Verse 8. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How many people can tell me what that word saved means, Chris? What does save mean? Sozo. Sozo. Is that is the word? Total preservation from surrounding evil. Amen? Saved is not just getting to heaven. Amen? When he saved us, he delivered us from all the works of Satan. Amen? So sozo is what, man? Total preservation from surrounding evil. Amen? So if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, God, see, see a lot of people, I've got Jesus in my heart. He's in my heart. Well, I don't know where your heart is because that's not your heart that he's talking about. He's talking about another heart, isn't he? The innermost. I've got Jesus on the inside, but the Jesus on the inside wants to get out of your mouth. Amen? Is that okay? So if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth Jesus Christ, then he is going to deliver you from all the... Surrounding evil. Do you believe that today? Whatever's attacking you, whatever's, whatever's going around. Let me just read it again. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved from all the surrounding evil, all the negative forces, every assignment that the devil has against you, everything that would, would come against you to stop you from fulfilling your purpose on this planet, anything that's there. Because, friend, I want to tell you, until you start speaking it out of your mouth, it won't come to pass. If you remember that this is how God works, God works in, in, in an amazing way. And, and God, as we know, fashioned the worlds out of nothing. 
And it came to a place there where he spoke. He said, let there be. And as he spoke the word, he had it in his mind. He had it in his heart. I'm going to create a universe. I'm going to create a people. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to have this. And if he just had it in his heart, he could have just walked around heaven all day and nothing would have happened. But all of a sudden, he rose up and he started to speak out the dream and the plan that he had for humanity. And he said, let there be light. And the first day, the second day, the third day, the, and went on and on and on. And it created all this beautiful stuff for you and I to enjoy. It's ours, amen. Spoke a couple of weeks ago about Abraham. How Abraham's name was Abram. But God came to him and spoke to him. See, he had a dream, he had a vision. He had a plan to restore mankind. And he, and he came to Abram and he, said, and he said to Abram, I am going to cause you to become the father of many nations. And I'm going to change your name. I'm going to now call you Abraham. And they took him by the hand and they took him outside. And he said, have a look at the stars in the sky and have a look at the sand. On the, and that's how your descendants shall be. But you see, Abraham and Sarah were barren. But he spoke and he called those things that be not as though they were. And as he spoke those words over this man, it, some creative thing happened. We know it took a while, but friend, I want to tell you what God said will come to pass. And whatever God says about Australia and this nation, the nations of the world, I want to tell you that God is going to have a church and he's going to have a people and he's going to have a, a, a great army that's going to rise up in this hour and they're going to march across this land and they're going to confess the word of God and demons will have to run in terror. Because not because Neil says it or because he's preaching about it. It's because what God says. Friend, I want to tell you it's time that we stop listening to garbage coming out of pulpits and start saying, I'm not going to listen to that because I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born to rule and reign. Hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> hoo, I like that. Hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I don't know about you, but... That turns me on, David. That's what gets you up in the morning, amen? It gets you going because this is what God's, I believe, what God's doing. The word of faith is not just in our hearts, but it's also be in our mouth. Got to, got to allow it to happen, eh? Paul calls this the spirit of faith. I don't know about you, but why don't we just lift up our hands right now? Father, would you give us the spirit of faith? Father, the spirit of faith would come on the inside of us. Lord, the spirit of faith, hallelujah, that would cause us to overcome and triumph over every devil in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Your faith, word, can totally transform your life. I want you to think of that. Your faith word, your faith words that come out of your mouth can totally transform your life. Went to a meeting the other night of Darren Bagley. Darren was a drug runner, drug pusher. Was in jail for I don't know how long. God gloriously saved him. He's got a word of faith that comes out of him. He's not listening to the, to the status quo sort of preaching. She'll be right, mate, or this or that. He's got the word of God in his heart and he speaks it out with boldness and with authority. And I want to tell you, it messes with your mind. How many people know we have something that will mess with our minds and our thinking? He made a statement that shocked me. He said God told him not to read his Bible for 12 months. And he thought, God, that is strange. Why would you ask me to do that? He said, because you've got too many preconceived ideas on what I've said. I want to teach you by my spirit. I want to reveal stuff to you. Then you can go back and check in the word of God and see what I've said. Friend, we've got to actually find out what God really said and not what we think he said. Eh? We're going to find out what he really said, not what we think he said. We've got to change the way we think. 
But your faith words can totally transform your life and those around you. Like a mighty wrecking ball. Wish I had, uh, what's the name here to sing it? <laughs> what's the name? Miley. I hope she'd get a bit more clothes on though, but anyhow. <laughs> Like a mighty wrecking ball banging into a wall. Anybody seen a construction site where they've got that big wrecking ball and it keeps bang, bang, bang. Finally that wall comes crumbling down. I want to tell you, friends, there's some walls around our lives and I want to tell you, you've got to hammer it. You've got to bang it with that, with the word of God until it lets you go, until it crushes and falls to the ground. My chains fell off and now I'm free, hallelujah. The walls have, have, have been broken. Jesus, God uh, tore that curtain from top to bottom or bottom to top or wherever, however he did it. Top to bottom, I go get it right the first time, did I? <laughs> Good. He escaped, hallelujah, he's out of there in Jesus' name. Now he's looking for people like you and me. I want to, can I ask you today that we would never utter another negative word, that we would say, hey, I'm the healed, hallelujah. I'm the prosperous, glory to God. I said for years, I used to go around there with my wallet, I said, God, I got heaps of this stuff, hallelujah. If you were in my church a long time ago, I opened up my wallet one day and I, I got nothing in there. <laughs> but if you keep confessing it, praise God, amen. If you like a wrecking ball, it'll keep hitting, hallelujah, and bang and crash until that wall comes tumbling down, amen. We've got to hit it with the Word of God, like a hammer. The Bible says the Word of God is like a hammer. The walls are coming down with a shout of praise. The dam busters of old, uh, the first bomb didn't break through, but constantly hitting that same spot, you've got to hit that thing. Don't take on the world, friend, but take on one thing. If you've got an arthritis in your elbow or something like that, you just keep talking about it. You are healed and, and hit that one, amen. Hit it, hit it, until that thing goes, hallelujah. Then, then hit something else, amen, until you're totally free, amen. Trouble with us, we want the whole lot now. <laughs> hey, we can have it if you've got the faith for it. But I'm just saying, start winning a couple. Start taking it, take it little by little. Little by little, we take back the territory. Little by little, hallelujah. You, you, whatever it might be. <laughs> Can't think of anything wrong with me at the moment. <sighs> Didn't break through, but it constantly hitting uh, the wall, and all of a sudden, the wall, uh, the wall burst open and flooded the land. I want to tell you, there's something in the realm of the spirit. We talk about the glory. We talk about the presence of God. I want to tell you, there's something about the word of God. We start confessing that our God reigns. He rules and we start speaking the word of God with power and with authority. I want to tell you, the heavens will be opened. Amen. The heavens will be opened and like a mighty rushing wind, like a mighty flood, this whole nation will be filled with the glory of God. Amen. You won't be able to stand in the presence. Oh my God. I, I'm longing for the day when we come to the church and we start to strike up the band and all of a sudden all the band gets slain in the spirit hallelujah and then all of a sudden there's music coming out of I don't know where but the piano starts playing itself and all the people there were just so full of the whole oh you may think I'm a dreamer I'm a dreamer hallelujah oh I'm a dreamer oh hallelujah oh you're crazier than I am you lot Oh, shakabundi. Oh, lift up your voices in this house. Amen. Rina mai kasharabundi. Why don't you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. To our God be the glory. What an amazing God. What an amazing Savior. Oh, we stand in awe of you, my God. Oh, rabba ba ba Your faith word can totally transform your life. Totally transform your life. Why don't you wage war on what the enemies tried to put on your life? Cancer must bow to Jesus Christ. Oh, kalama shatai. You're in this house today and there may be something there. I want to tell you the Bible says one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. There's something about the prayer of agreement. There's something about 
releasing your faith. Something about acknowledging that God can do it. You need to come, the front is coming.